continue right here on the Board of Swim Board is Hotline of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Bob Pompeyani with you until 11 o'clock at 412-575-2600. A lot of calls, so we'll get right to them. George in Mount Lebanon is first tonight. What's up, George? Hey, Bob, I watched the game today, mm -hmm. but, but I didn't notice Antonio Brown being on the sidelines. Was he there? He was there, but he was in his, uh, he was not in, uh, you know, casual Steeler clothing. He was in his own personal clothing, I think. And then I didn't see him after a while, so I don't know where he went, but he was there originally, yes. Because uh, I thought there was something more to this mysterious knee injury. No, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> nothing much more was talked about. Uh, I don't know what the problem was, but he did not practice all week, so I guess they wanted to find out today, but he came in and he didn't do all that much unless they did it underneath, and he was deemed uh, inactive for the day. So I think you saw Juju Smith-Schuster find out what it's like without Antonio Brown because right. he got a lot of the coverage that Antonio got, and he had a lackluster day based on what you'd expect against Cincinnati, just five catches and a couple of drops. All right, man, thank you. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Will. In McKee's Rocks. Hey, Will. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Happy What's, New Year. You too. I, I wanted to talk to you about lack of preparation uh, with the Steelers. Um, what percentage, in your opinion, of the blame goes to coaches and what percentage goes to the players? You know, that's hard to figure out unless you're in there. Um, I know this. I know coaches prepare um, on Tuesday. This is after the game. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm sorry. Christmas Day it was. We taped a show and Mike Tomlin did his press conference. He was there at 4 in the morning. He didn't leave that night on Christmas Day until 5. He spent the whole day there. The, the whole coaching staff, they work hard. They go over everything. You know, I think there's an accountability of coaches, but I also think it falls on players too. Um, so if you're asking me, I don't know the exact percentage. It starts, of course, with the head coach making sure they come out ready to play. But as a head coach, and I've talked to many of them, you can do all of that you want, but it's it's up to those players to come up and do it too, isn't it? I mean, it's 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 a two-way street, I think. There, absolutely. So I don't know. Yeah, Everyone always wondering. wants to pin head coaches on it. I get that, but if you're going to pin everything on them, you know, I, I've seen what they do trying to prepare this team for not losing fumbles. Yet they lost fumbles more than any team in the NFL this year. I mean, that kind of stuff also falls on players. So. Uh, it's too easy to just point to one person. I think it's, it's multi-layered there, and I do think some of the responsibilities goes to players. They have to be the ones executing the stuff that is put into play. Wonderful. I appreciate it, Bob. Yeah, thank you, Will. Appreciate that. Let's go to John and Greentree. Hey, John. Welcome. How are you? Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up? Um, thanks for taking my call, man. Um, <laughs> I know that the Pittsburgh Steelers lost today, but um, if, Cleveland, if, if the Cleveland Browns were, if the Cleveland Browns were to be the Baltimore wasn't it the wasn't the Steelers going to be in the playoffs? And about Pitt tomorrow, I'm going to watch Pitt versus Stanford. Thank you very much. All right, I hope you do. It's on KDK. We look forward to that game. Uh, yeah, Cleveland wins. Steelers are in. It went down to the final couple of seconds actually before an interception. And all I had to do there was a there were a couple of passes to Baker Mayfield. Although he played well generally, he was off the mark. And then when he was off the mark, it cost them opportunities to get closer to that field goal range. So that was a big loss given where they come back from, losing 26-24. And uh, there were a couple of blown calls in that game as well. James and Sarver. Hey, James. How are you doing, Bob? Uh, Good, up thanks. Until last week, I thought Tomlin was safe, even though he that that fake punt thanks, last Mike. week against New Orleans. But after the day, the Stewards came in the day, Logic. They were dead. They were done. They didn't seem like they wanted to win. And uh, I think Tomlin's days are numbered. We have a coach in Greenfield who won a Super Bowl with the Packers. And I think uh, Cincinnati's going to be firing their coach and maybe Fort Cherry grab might be a fit. What do you think? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Mike McCarthy will have a few opportunities. Uh, you know, but he was ushered out of Green Bay very unceremoniously, well, by the way. I thought that was unfair for what he's represented for that team. Uh, but, no, I'm not ready to go there yet. And, again, it's not a hot take, so you won't like it. Uh, I think they have other issues they have to work out, and we'll see what they do with them. So, um, again, the biggest thing for me is that they missed a great opportunity uh, to take advantage of what I think is a weak AFC by comparison to previous years. So, that's what's going to hurt them more than anything else, looking back on this season and what could have been so many plays that could have changed each and every one of those outcomes. 
Um, not the least of which is Chris Boswell. As I said, you know, it's too easy to just forgive him. He cost them a couple of games, and he was the guy they paid a lot of money to because he had been so good at it last year. That's how close it is in the NFL. It goes down like that all the time, and uh, it's a weird Sunday to Sunday, which makes trying to survive a survivor poll very impossible. Let's go to Al in Bethel. What's up, Al? Hey, Bob. How you? All right, how are you? Good. Before I answer your question, the one play I uh, would take mm-hmm. back, for everybody who solely wants to blame the entire fault on Tomlin, Tomlin's also at fault for the stock market. He's also at fault for <laughs> high gas prices. He's also at the fault for unemployment. So <clears throat> let's just blame everything on Mike Tomlin, then everybody will feel better. How does that sound? Well, now. listen, all I'm saying about that is I expect with this roster for them to be in the playoffs, number one. I also expect when they get there to win more games in the playoffs than they have won. So that's a valid criticism. You, do, you would expect that. But I also think there's a steadying influence that they have been in contention for winning uh, a division. And even when they've not won that division, they've missed it by just one game in each of the times they've missed. So uh, you got to get there first. And I understand why people want to jump on coaches because every other team seems to do that. But it is a watch, what, you know, be careful what you wish for kind of business, too. You can make changes. Like, did you see Adam Gase, who was celebrated in Miami? He looks like he's going to be fired. And guess who they're talking about down there? Rex Ryan. Look at who Green Bay has interviewed. Retread coaches. You know, you can get into that if you want to play that game. But the point is, uh, you're going to have as many detractors as you will people who applaud those decisions. If you want to change just for change's sake, go ahead and make the change. We'll see. But uh, I I think you will see some coaching changes on this roster. I do. But, uh, you know, we'll find out who it is and, and when they do it. Let me ask you a question you asked about. Yeah. Real simple. Kevin Colbert and Le'Veon Bell, not not coming together on an agreement. I have the one thing I would take back, and I mm-hmm. think that would have made a big difference in the Steelers. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thank you. And, and I also think they should have re-addressed that linebacker situation. Last year they were handcuffed because of Shazier's injury, the timing of it. They didn't have many options there. They brought in Sean Spence because there was no one available. They had an offseason to figure that out, and the best they can do is John Bostic. Nothing against him personally. But they needed to come up with more, I think, in that department. And they got victimized by linebacker play, specifically in that Charger game in the second half when they had no options. And that's not just personnel. That's coaching schematics. They were out coached in the second half of that game. Let's go to Pam in South Park. Hey, Pam, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Bob? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I'm a big fan of the show. Um, we appreciate it. I just wanted to say, first of all, the officiating this year has been absolutely terrible. League-wide, I'd say. League-wide, yep. absolutely. And the people that are sending Boswell death threats, that's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he was only the kicker. There's a whole team that, you know, has underperformed this season, and he should not be getting death threats. Well, nobody should that's, be doing that. That's, that's horrendous. Absolutely not. That's and Twitter, terrible. you know, actually Twitter, the people who run Twitter should take a better look at some of the people who are on there putting those kind of things out there. And those are the people they should go after quite frankly. I totally uh, they sit there agree. anonymously behind some little avatar that doesn't even make sense, and they, and they make whatever threats they want to make. I'm sorry, grow up. It's unnecessary, totally and it's agree, repulsive. Bob. It's not fair to him no. at all. But I also want to say, you know, just a question. Do you think that the Roonies are, you know, don't want to get rid of Tomlin because they don't want to ruin their reputation of having these coaches that, no. you know, long term that they've only had three coaches in the past. No, but that is that definitely. is why they're not doing it for that reason. They're doing it. That's a byproduct of their decisions. You know, that they believe in stability. You could argue that John Harbaugh should have been fired in Baltimore last year after they missed the playoffs for three straight years. There are people who wanted that fan base reacted that way, but they stuck with him. He did a very good job of changing their fortunes around. He was forced originally to go to Lamar Jackson because Joe Flacco was injured, but he stuck to him even when Flacco was ready to go. Changed everything schematically. He did that on defense as well, so kudos to him. But, you know, he's a good coach. They believe in stability down there, too, and stability is a good thing. If you have what you deem as a good coach, you stick with a good coach. Um, and, and that's just the way it is. And if you're going to start playing some of these games, we're going to have as many potentially as nine or ten openings here. Uh, how many hot prospects are there out there? How many are ready to take that step? How many, if they do take the step, are going to fail? People in Detroit, I see, don't like Matt Patricia, first year on the job. Dirk Cutter's out of a job already. It didn't take long in Tampa. They didn't like, what they're, you know, you can start playing that. It's a merry-go-round game, and sometimes I think it's dangerous. So 
that's my little take on that. But thank you for the call, Pam. Appreciate it. We're going to take a break. Eric and Jeff, you're coming up next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.